starts her narrative speech number two called Let's Blend Together. Have you ever wanted to learn how to create those seamless gradients that they can come from anywhere? Or are you trying to upgrade your artistic abilities? Or are you just curious about how artists pull off certain effects using colored pencils? These tips that I'm going to give you to help create a seamless gradient using colored pencils are a lot of candy. I'll walk you through blending pencils, choosing the colors, planning your space out, and layering the pencils, along with finishing the piece and what varnishing is. For the pencils I'll be using today, I'll be using the Prismacolor Premier Colors pencils in Ultramarine, Aquamarine, and Spring Green. I like Prismacolors because of their smooth and creamy texture. They're easy to blend with, and as an artist, they are a must-have. However, if you do not have these fancy artist pencils, any other kind of pencil will do for you. Crayola, Rose Art, your results might just differ. And who knows, you might have better pencils than I do, so you might have a better gradient than I do. I am using the colors green, blue, and aqua. And the reason I'm using these colors is because they're next to each other on the color wheel, which will make it easier to demonstrate this piece. You can use this technique with any combination of colors, though. It's just what I'm using to show the depth. We will begin by planning out our gradient, dividing it up into three parts. Put your green on one side, the blue green in the middle, and the blue on the other end. Sketch it out lightly so you can make corrections as you go and change the area of where you're going. Try and keep the gradient even. This is important because it helps give a sense of harmony within your gradient. It also will give more transition shades. Transition shades are the colors between shades, such as the blue-green between the blue and the green. Having more of these creates depth and unity within your piece. So, be sure to keep those in there. As we begin to layer on the color for the gradient, we should start with tiny circles. This will make it so there is less white space as a final result within our gradient. It also helps because the circles will overlap on top of one another and begin to blend their colors together. Make sure that the main areas of your blue, your aqua, and your green are prominent, so try and not go over top of them too much. Do tiny circles to make sure the three colors do not get lost. Once you feel confident with your tiny circles, begin to overlay them on top of one another. This will create those fun transition shades we've been talking about and begin to build up color. You should get to the point where your gradient is about 60% and there's a lot of saturation on the page. That is when we'll begin to varnish. What is varnishing, you might ask? It's when we use a lot of pressure and get a deep saturation out of a colored pencil. Imagine pressing down really hard. You will do that and make bigger circles to varnish. This will get more color onto the page and give us the saturation we need to have a more prominent gradient. It will also make the process go by a lot quicker, but be sure to take your time. Once all the colors are saturated, on the page and you're happy with the saturation color and before you begin to add that oily layer that varnish ends up adding the harder you push down use a colorless blender a colorless blender pencil or a spray bottle with alcohol and a q-tip like I'm showing you in the video this will be able to give a more even coverage throughout your piece and give it a matte finish However, if you don't have these, that's okay. You just uh, keep going over the pencils and it'll create this nice waxy layer. These are just alternative things that you can do within the piece to help it. So hopefully that helps out a lot and you learned a lot from that. Blending with colored pencils. Um, to blend with colored pencils, you need to choose your pencils, plan out your space, and lay your colors on, then varnish and finish up your page. If you're a novice or someone who wants to do art, I suggest trying this. It would be very surprising how a couple simple techniques can really improve 
your coloring book game, your drawing game. And it's just a really useful tip to have because you can use it in a lot of different situations when it comes to art. You can use it with crowns. You can use it with markers. You can use it with pen. It's actually very helpful. You can even use it with graphite. So if you're someone that wants to be an artist or you want to level up your artistic game, I would really suggest this. That way you can be the artist that you know your parents want you to be. Thank you.